Hi everybody, it's Robin from Talks from the Heart. In this video, I am going to do a flip through of my A5. This is a Chic Sparrow um, Outlander Frasier. It's the reddish um, version of that, that line of leather. I just posted a video of all of my 2019 um, planner fails and planner lineups. And this is in the, uh, it's a go. Big thumbs up, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this is where I am now journaling everything. I'm journaling notes, uh, scripture writing, brain dump, just anything that I put on paper that is not in a planner spread like my Hobonichi Weeks or my Erin Condren Vertical, I put in here. So it's a, it's a free-for-all in here. So I moved into an A5 because I was currently using this book that is inside here as my de morning devotion and scripture writing. And I thought, you know what, I'm just going to keep on going with a book, um, a notebook that I had already going. So this is an Ollie clip. It's there for decoration, you guys. I don't really reach for it. Um, again, this is the Outlander. I bought this pre-loved. It is just the classic, no pockets, no pen loop. At the beginning of each month, I put a little tab. These are from Michael's from the, oh goodness, um, not the Sweet Kawaii Designs, but the, um, oh my goodness, I'll link it below. I'm not going to waste time trying to remember it. Um, so I just put, and I don't know what I was smoking here, but uh, I didn't put it over where I was, maybe because of the strap. I don't know, sometimes I do have moments of clarity. And so at the first of the month, I always tab the beginning so that I know where, where I'm at. I have some sentimental charms that I put here. This is from an Alex and Annie bracelet that I wore for, goodness, a solid two years. My son gave it to me and I, he gave it to me for Christmas. And on the back of it, it says Unexpected Miracles. Let me see if I can scroll you in and also get you focused on the charm. Means a tremendous thing to me because my son was really, of course my mom's going to say the same thing. He was difficult to raise, you guys. He was, I used to joke that he was a form of birth control, like... If I had known how hard he was going to be, I don't know. But he's a good, good man now, and I just love him to pieces. And all everybody's hard work, his included, turned out okay. So, <laughs> But he gave this to me, and it means so much. So I had worn the bracelet down to the point where it was turning coppery and tarnishing, and so I cut it off, put it to a jump ring and a lobster claw, and this just brings me peace and joy every day that I reach for that. And then this feather here is from Vintage. They sell them at Hobby Lobby. Um, they are not a, um, they only wholesale to bead shops and big stores. They actually are located 20 minutes uh, east of me and I'm friends with the owner. And this feather is from their custom line, I think, but any feather. And I just thought it was cool and a friend bought it for me when we went to their um, their like garage sale they have every year in Galena, Illinois. So these two charms mean so much to me. And so let's open this up. All right. Like I said, oh, wait, I want to tell you guys something. So I started getting back into my fountain pens. And yeah, that's what I want to do next. And so I carry a Lammy and then a Twisby Echo. Not going to get into detail with these, but I carry it here in my Chic Sparrow, what they call quiver, and I just carry it like that. Now, if I wanted to not carry both of these pens, the um, Echo or the Lamy just fit securely here, but eh, it never makes me feel very secure when it's, when it's like that. So I have been carrying it like this to get over my issues of having everything perfect. Because, you know, I have many, many issues, and one of them is collection obsession, where I want one of every color, and the other thing is where I want it to look picture perfect. And I thought, no, I'm going to use what I have, because right now in my life, I'm trying to purge my house, because we're having an auction, and I need to not be bringing more stuff in 
at the rate I was. All right, so I've been carrying my pens like this um, because it it's a classic. It doesn't have a pen loop, all right? And so let's get into it. One thing about the Frasier is that it does scratch, but I'm okay with that because I'm using what I have. So let's scroll out just a pinch. Okay, so it has four strands and I've been carrying my devotional from Allie Brown from Illustrated Faith. I think it's sold out. I'm super sorry, but again, I'm showing you what I have in mind. And I do that because if I just need to kind of be lifted up or some inspirational reading, I, I just have that with me. And I also do scripture writing every morning. And so I have that with me if I want to write scripture. And in this video, I'm actually going to show you how I made this. I guess I should have led with that, but I get so excited when I talk about my, my TNs and it's even more fun because I'm filming and nobody can talk back to me. <laughs> so I have the floor, you guys. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm gonna show you how to make this felted DIY dashboard that will, so you don't glue pockets here, it gives you some pockets. So this clip is from my friend Caroline shop on Etsy. Sentimental value because um, she is a good friend of mine. Actually, we haven't chatted in a long time. It reminds me, I probably should message her and check on her. Um, Panda is an iron-on patch that I got from Michaels. And I thought it was adorable because um, I'm a huge fan of Pookie Bear Cuties. And her little guy is a panda. Or it's a girl, I don't know. And look, it's holding a planner. Or a book. I'm calling it a planner. So this is this is uh this is my world here, Robin Planner world. So this it was just an applique, and I just ironed it on. And this is from Every Minute, Every Minute of Story. Oh shoot, I'll link that below. So um this pouch is so easy to make. Like I said, we're gonna make that this in the video. And one of the things I keep in here is I copy the scripture that I'm writing for the month. I pick one scripture a month and I write it at least one to two times a day, hoping that I'll memorize it. And so I copied Psalm 111. Now I'm not writing this whole thing. I'm just writing um, verse 10 because it's the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And that I'm really trying to put that to my heart because I do believe that when you seek God first, Everything else will fall into place if you trust him. So that's my uh, copy. And then I always leave an edge. Because at the beginning of the month, what I will do is I will tip that in so that I remember what, um, what I tried to memorize and write every day for the month of April. Look at that, little, little guys. I got that from a children's book at the library. <laughs> so I have the um, scripture that I, I copy. I um, also, one of my hopes and dreams, and listen, I have not been proactive, so remember, if you have a hope and dream and you don't do anything for it, it's not going to come to fruition, and that is my, that's my life story sometimes. I desperately have, for years, wanted to learn sign language. See, I know, hi, and that wasn't me giving you the pinky bird, you know what I'm talking about, is H-I, but... Um, so I thought if I have this with me where I practice the alphabet and the um, numbers and I laminated it. So I just copied it out of a book from the library. I think it was Sign Language for Dummies or whatever. That was yellow and black books. And then I, I copied it and I laminated it. I carry that with me. Um, journaling prompts, some stickers. Let's see what else is in here. And then I love this. It's from an old um, planner attic box, I think. And I just laminated it and kind of sticks out, sort of. I don't know. Sometimes I just stuff the pockets just because. And then later I'm like, ah, there's too much stuff in here. And then I just get rid of it all. Um, so this is from, oh gosh, it's journaling prompts or thank, um, gratitude. It's called the Thousand Gifts. You can just Google that, and I print it off and cut it down the months, and I just carry those in there. Bow clips from Rose Colored Days, and then this is a journaling card that I laminated, and on the back, I had my daughter, daughter sign it when she graduated from high school, and I signed it with her, and we dated it. I'm not going to turn it over because our last name is there, and... and um, 
this, I always sing her that song. I love you, a bushel and a peck, a bushel and a peck, and a hug around the neck, a hug around the neck, and a barrel and a heap, a barrel and a heap, and I'm talking in my sleep about you, about you. So when I came across, and yes, I cannot sing, <laughs> but that's, <laughs> hey, I gave it a shot, and you know, I always try to keep it real here. Um, so this, when I came across this journaling card in my planner travels, I freaked out. I'm like, yes. So this means a lot to me and I just keep it tucked here, right there in my planner. All right. So this is an Anami, I'm going to say it right, Seven Seas Writer from Nanami.com. I'll link it below. It is Tomoe River Paper. It is lined. You can barely see the lines. Trust me, you guys. So if you like heavy lines, you do not want this book. But it is, oh gosh, does it even say how many pages? 480 pages in an A5 size, 7 millimeter rule, cream paper. And it's the Seven Seas Writer. And I will link that, that um, website below. So I just put... I got the plastic cover from Amazon. My friend um, Jennifer told me about them, and I'm like, yes, they're like five bucks. You can buy a double pack for 10, 70, or something like that. So I covered the book because I wanted to protect the book. And then I just started adding vinyls. And then on the inside cover, I um, just started decorating it because, you know, every horizontal surface must be covered with stickers in my world. And then I just started journaling. And then I just kind of go ahead and kind of, you know, wherever I want to lay down some washi or a sticker, I do that or I watercolor. I had some samples of washi tape and I just wanted to use them up. So I just stuck them in there. And then the back cover, I have fragility. She must make an appearance in pretty much everything that I have. And so if I end up with a teeny bitty piece of washi tape, I just plop it here, which is fine. And then on the back, I had these left over and I just thought they were so pretty. And this cover actually does have a pen loop, but I will tell you that mine on my um, Hobonichi Weeks is tearing. And because I wanna use the cover, even after the book is full, I'm not using the pen loop because I don't want it to tear. So that is my journal that I just write everything in. And then the back side, I have a vinyl from Odd Girl Journals. And then this is where I keep pretty much some stickers that um, I use. I just put those in there. I'm not even really using them. I have washi cards lots of them this washi card came from aliexpress and i think they're five for a dollar and so you can just go to aliexpress and just start searching washi cards i use this to tear my washi and then just washi samples and then this is from pookie bear cuties one of her die cuts and i just laminated it because i thought it looked pretty sticking out there so it's pretty simple um and then the pocket so this felt dashboard gives you two pockets you could create an outside pocket too so um but we're gonna in this video make one and um i don't know maybe i'm starting to look at the time on the video we might have to go to two videos i don't know we'll see if i shut up we can make it all in one video <laughs> all right so this back is a b6 because if you've been watching my videos and been a subscriber to my channel you know i'm a b6 fan but i really because i'm writing so much i mean some days i take up 10 pages i'm writing so much i thought i needed the a5 size and i'm really enjoying it so this back insert is from paper penguin co and it is Tomoe River Paper, and it's where I swatched out all of my Daniel Smith watercolor samples. I bought, okay, so I bought a watercolor sample off Amazon, and it has every single Daniel Smith watercolor so that I could have it all in one spot. And when I'm shopping for watercolors, I know exactly which ones I like and which I don't like. And then when I buy them, I mark them with a bow. 
okay so those are all my daniel smith and i'll link that sample below on amazon it's pretty cheap it's like 20 some dollars and and on the cards save the cards because there's still enough watercolor to do stuff with on that so that's pretty cool and so i have these are the um neo color crayons which they're like crayons you color on them and they're like watercolors and so I have all of these colors, which are plenty, but I saved the color chart that I printed off online and then marked the ones that I have or that I wanted. And then my Jane Davenport, and then I kind of separated this with the page, and that is my Amazon um, find for the 36 watercolors. I'll link that below too, because that's pretty cool. This, this is a great color palette. And I know you can't feel this, but there is no chalky happening here. There's a little chalky happening here. That's how I tell if I like it or not. Um, no chalky feeling with this. And I'll link that below too. And then I started playing with um, watercolor pencils because they're easy to travel with the water pen. And I'm it's on my to-do list to do a watercolor video for you guys just to kind of show the stuff that I have. Then I started back into my fountain pens. So I... I I haven't even messed with this, but fountain pen log. And then I just wrote the fountain pens and the ink I'm trying. And then back here, I swatch washi tape. And this is a um, from Jet Pens. It's like an ink um, sample sheet or whatever that you can print out. And here I um, swatch washi that I have. Um, couple of reasons why if I'm out somewhere and there's a washi sale and I'm like shoot I don't have that I can go here and I'm like oh yes you do Robin or hey you've got eight million colors of yellow don't buy another one <laughs> so this helps a lot because then it just stimulates me to know what I have so that I don't buy duplicates because look do I really need two hues of holographic yellow bows no I don't and I'm not that much of a collector. So that is why I keep that with me because this goes everywhere with me. So if you are not interested in making one of these, click off the video and I appreciate you taking the time. If you're interested in making one of these, I am going to start that project now. So before we get started on the um, felt project, I wanted to show you guys something um, because I do think it's relevant because I had talked about um, the Fraser not having any pen loops and I have two A5s here. One is a waypoint. I am not a fan of this. I haven't, I unboxed it a bit ago. I bought it on the anniversary sale and it just is way, it's oily you guys. And then I called Chic Sparrow and they said, oh yeah, that, that leather can rub off on the inside of bags or whatever. And I'm like, okay, yep, that's not something I'm really looking forward to. But this has the new pen loop and this has the old pen loop. So I wanted to show you guys that you really have to work the pen loop for it to fit. It doesn't just automatically fit. Oops. Okay, see I'm pushing hard on that pen loop. And this, so this is a Lamy. And let's, so it, you really do have to stretch it out. That's the new pen loop. Here's the old pen loop. It's a better fit. I don't like to stress when I'm putting my pen somewhere. Okay. So it's a better fit in the old pen loop. And then here is the Twisby Echo. And there is the new pen loop. And see, it gets caught on that silver ring. <sighs> And I guess I could go like that, but not real. Well, yeah. And it's a twist cap. So it's not going to, I'm not going to lose my pen. Let's try the waypoint. So this is the Twisby. See, it's, so it just depends on how you want your pens to fit. That fits a little better. This is my favorite pen, the Twisby. And that, not so much. I don't know, maybe with some stretching, I guess. But this um, leather, I'm not a fan of it. But I just wanted to show you guys that really quick with the new pen loop versus the old pen loop and 
whether or not you have a fountain pen and if you're ever concerned about it fitting. All right, let's get into the uh, DIY project. Okay, so I just finished dinner and I was thinking this video might be too long. So I might post this sec this section of the video, the DIY, as a separate video, but still leave it tacked to the end of this because, you know, I said I would. Um, so there'll be two options. All right, so I'm going to deconstruct this and show you. I'll just throw everything on the floor. <laughs> what else is new? Um, I'm going to show you how I have this all put together to cause the least bit of trauma on this book because sometimes when you have books that have stitched spines or they're not they're not made like a traveler's notebook insert it can cause it to break down okay so I have the sleeve here and this is what we're gonna make I'm going to take it all apart make sure I don't catch the thread with the paper clip there we go. And then, <clears throat> I'll just, there we go. All right, so this is, this is what it looks like. All right, and then I, that's just an iron-on patch. All right, so let's, let me show you this. So the cover's from Amazon. It was like five bucks. Thank you to my friend Jennifer. She helped me find that. And it has a pen loop if you're, not worried about that breaking down okay so what I did was is I took the book and I inserted that inside the cover but the cover is what's taking the um, the weight of on the on the plastic with the strands so because the knot because I didn't want the knot like in any of my inserts I washi taped the ends of the strand there. Can you see that? And then that just sits on this section of the spine, okay? And as you can see, even just with minimal use, you guys, and I'll get this out of the way, this leather creates a glare on the camera. Even just with, uh, where are we at? <clears throat> Trying to find a piece of paper. Even just with minimal use, you can see the plastic is starting to like bend, but it's not tearing. Yay! And so that is what this cover looks like. It's just a basic plastic cover. Again, totally replaceable at $5, two for $10.70 or something. And I sound like a broken record. I'll link it below. It's from Amazon. And then I just put vinyls from Pookie Bear Cuties, Odd Girl Journals, and thus I am repeating myself is a bad habit I have all right so that is how I got it in there I put the, and I'll do it at the end you know what I'll do it at the end so the first here's the supply list that you need I got this piece of felt from Michaels it was a dollar 99 it's 12 inches by 18 inches and I will tell you this is kind of like a greenish blue there was not a lot of color choices and since I had already picked gray I didn't really have a lot of color choices and I honestly want to move in to this Odyssey but I think it kind of clashes but eh, it's inside and we'll just roll with it okay so the gray one has yellow it's the gray felt it has floss color number 444, all right? And then it has adhesive fabric. This is an extra expense you don't need to spend. Same with the applique, I just liked it. This was really the only one that I liked. Okay, so let's get back to task here. Piece of felt, 12 by 18, if you're doing an A5. If you're doing a smaller one, you don't need this big of a piece. Then you need some floss or some heavy thread. I liked this color, 4514, because it kind of had the blue and some purples in it. And I thought that it really, really went well with the, um, with the color blue. It wasn't too much blue, and it gave me some 
you know, different variety. And then I picked up these, um, kind of, they're darning needles or darners. And just because they have a big eye to them. And I, so then you use this um, embroidery floss and I don't break it down. I don't take out different strands of the floss. I use the whole thing. So that's why you need a needle with a big eye. Okay. Let's see. My hands are such a hot mess from working in that garage for two weeks. All right. So that's basically what you need along with a, did you hear that? That was my scissors. <laughs> Thank goodness I have more than one. You need a sharp pair of scissors, not these, but the ones that are on the floor, people, the ones that are on the floor. All right, so that's basically what you need. And then a Sharpie, because you're gonna wanna mark, this is a fat one, but um, you're gonna wanna mark where you're gonna cut, okay? If you're a quilter and you like straight lines or whatever the case may be, you can cut this however you want. I thus pretended to be a quilter a long time ago, but uh, those skills are long forgotten. All right, so you wanna take your, your insert and you want to um, measure it. Now, you can lay it like this, all right? And you also want to allot for the spine. So this spine is, this spine is probably about a half an inch, okay? And so you can lay it like this and then just make sure you have enough space there and then just cut right, right along the back part of the book. And then you'll want it like this where it's on the edge. So line up this this and then you're going to cut here and then just the bottom piece here so let me do that off camera and i'll be right back I freehanded that. I'm like a freak of nature. I can cut a straight line. Is it perfect? No, but it's pretty darn close without a ruler or anything. Now, my mom is a quilter and she is horrified, I'm sure, when people don't cut with rulers. But all right, so I'm just going to double check. So I have this part of the book lined up with the flush right here. And I'm just going to double check that I have everything exactly the way I want it before I start sewing and I do and a little bit of an overhang is no big deal that does not bother me at all I'm not sure you even want it perfect so you're left with two pieces if you're using if you're making an a5 and you're using the 12 by 18 felt okay so you're left with this long piece and then this more narrow piece and that's where I decided to come and make a pocket so you can see this one's too short see it's about it's too short so we're not going to use that one and I'm not even going to trim it I'm just going to sew it so this is the actual width of the piece there's a little bit of an overhang and I'm going to cut that off so I do better if it's facing that way make sure it's still lined up okay and it's not totally perfect, so I'm just going to hand cut it. And all your quilters just look away. <laughs> but that's really, that's not bad. That's how far off I was. That's not, that's not too bad. All right. Now, I am going to use the straight edge for the top of the pocket. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and I'm one of these, I hate tying off. So I pull out as long of a piece as I can endure when I'm sewing, and this one already got, okay, there we go. So seriously, you guys, like, I do not like tying off. So I cut a lot, and I'm okay with that. All right, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna cut that. And I'm gonna thread my needle after I lick it. 
Oh my goodness. I'm going to pick which needle did I use. I can't remember. All right. I'm just going to pick one of them because I'm not fancy. Thread your needle. And see, because you have that big eye needle, let me see if I can get you in focus. It goes right through, okay? Double up your thread as much as you can handle because the more double thread you have, the least opportunity it has to... Um, it's literally going to the floor, you guys. This is how much thread I cut. But like I said, I don't like tying off. All right. The first thing that I want to do, because I do want top stitching on my pocket like this, is I am going to, and I'm skipping the adhesive fabric because I just thought that was an added expense. I am going to top stitch across here. And when I get to the end, then I'm going to grab my bottom piece. And then I'm going to sew here, here, up here, across the top, and then down here and stop here. Okay. So I'm going to start way over here on the left. And that's always a good habit, you guys, is to kind of get a plan before you start. That could be a planner phrase, you know, get a plan before you start. <laughs> so I'm going to start here. I'm going to single stitch over here. Then I'm going to drop down here, go across here, up here all the way up to the top, across, and back down, and then tie off here, okay? So I am going to tie a very small slip knot. Just put it around your finger, put the loop through, and then just, just a single one, just to catch it. I'm going to trim it, okay? Because I don't want a big tail. I'm going to grab my chair because I'm going to be here for a bit. I'm not going to make you guys endure all of the sewing. I'm going to do steps on the camera, fast motion, and we'll go from there. All right, so I already got a knot. Ugh. Shoot. Oh. Okay, well, if it's time to get a knot, it's before you put your, your thread in your project, but I got it loose. Okay, so I got the knot loose and just making sure I have the straight edge. Yep, all right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to, at the very edge, I'm just going to, very edge corner, just catch a little piece of the felt. Okay, and just, that's it. And then I'm just going to do, this is not a blanket stitch, you guys. This is the basic, slip stitch. I don't even, I don't even want to try to do a blanket st stitch. I tried that once and I was like, uh, I'm over it. It was way too slow. So I just bring my needle up through the fabric. Make sure I'm in focus. Hold on. Yeah, let me scroll in just a pinch as long as you guys can endure my nasty hands from what I call manual labor, which is not, <laughs> which is my really poor taste joke of trying to clean out a garage that sat nasty for 20 years. Ugh, okay, so you just do a slip stitch. So just decide on the distance between your stitches and then just get your thread back like this and then just come up through and then pull it, making sure your work area is full of debris. And then that's all we're gonna do. And I do maybe a quarter of an inch. I don't know. And it's never perfect. And, you know, that falls under I don't care. Now, if the sticker's not straight, good Lord, I'll spend a whole bottle of undo just to get it straight. But this kind of stuff falls under the, uh-huh, are we done yet? <laughs> maybe it's uh, my sewing trauma. I don't know. But that is what we're going to do here. We're going to just stitch all the way across the pocket. And I'll be back with you in a minute. Okay, through the magic of television, <laughs> we are done with that row. You can see it's, this one's really bothering me a lot. That actually might have to 
There we go. So what you want to do is you don't want to pull tight. You just want to pull it so the thread is laying very relaxed on the felt. All right. So I've stitched across the top of the pocket and now I'm going to lay this here and I've stopped and then I'm just going to now grab both pieces and start collecting the bottom piece. All right. If you get a knot, do not panic and yell, Ma, I have a knot. Because that's kind of what you want to do sometimes, even as an adult. Uh, just calmly, don't pull at it, just kind of work at it calmly. And another tip, because I used to do beadwork, um, another tip is to just take the take the needle, take the thread out of the needle and work that way. Okay. And so just gently in sections, pull and then you just go up and over. Okay. And now I'm just grabbing the bottom and I'm going to go around the entire piece until I get to back to this corner where I I'm going to tie off and I will do that part with you. I am not going to uh, torture you with uh, filming the entire thing here because that'll be like watching paint dry you guys. And so you can kind of see what I'm doing. I know there's fancier stitches and I know my mom, she is a master sewer slash uh, quilter, the whole nine yards. Um, mom, favor, uh, comment below what kind of stitch I'm doing and if it's a slip stitch don't laugh at me it's just maybe just a slip stitch and then also um, I know it's not a blanket stitch but I just I'm not sure if this actually has a name <laughs> all right so um, my mom will comment below what kind of stitch I'm doing because she'll she'll know and if it doesn't have a name mom just put it doesn't have a name all right, so I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, so I've got all of, I've got this edge done and this edge done, and then I'm up here at the top. And I wanted to stop and tell you guys that if you didn't want top stitching on the very top part of your um, dashboard, you can stop here and tie off here and you'll still get the effect of the pocket. It just will stop the stitching right right there that's what the back side would look like but it's certainly doable all right so I'm at the corner and I'm gonna keep going and also if you're new to sewing or any kind of needle and thread just remember that if you have your thread doubled up you want to move it um, kind of on the needle okay so let's see here's my needle and then my double thread and right about right it ends right there okay and all you want to do is because it's been pushed together a lot you just want to take and get your needle kind of here and then this is the tail and you just kind of want to move your needle don't force it but move your needle towards the end of the tail that gives you more single thread otherwise if you're not paying attention you'll end up double threading some of it and it will give you a different look all right, so I am going to finish this and be back with you in a moment. Okay, so I'm finishing up and I was thinking while I was stitching, boy, my mom is such an amazing quilter. I could just tell by some of the comments that I'm, I'm paranoid <laughs> about getting this perfect, but I, I'm not much too concerned about perfection with this, mostly just, you know, to give me pockets in my TN and protect my, my book. So I'm going to finish up right here and I don't have much thread left even though this is doubled. I'd rather cut off than tie off. All right. So I kind of stop right here at the, the top of the pocket. So it's upside down right now in the, in the, in the camera. And then I'm just going to catch both pieces. All right. And I'm going to do that kind of twice, but not in the same hole. All right. And then I'm gonna go up, and now this time I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna come through both pieces. I'm just gonna come through the back side. So you see, here's a knot. 
don't worry, just gently back up a little bit and pull it out, okay? So now I have my thread coming in the, in the middle here where nobody can see it. And now I'm just going to start grabbing just little bits and pieces of the felt, all right? Be careful not to grab too much back here because then it will show when you have it closed or open, okay? Whichever side is showing, all right? So I'm just going to bend this back a little bit. And I'm just going to start grabbing and doing half stitch knots or half knot. I think that's what. So you're going to grab a loop, you know, you're going to pull it through and a loop is going to be created. Now, if you guys sew, you can skip ahead, but this is for people who have never ever touched a needle and thread because I say hey let's let's teach people how to do stuff like this and if you don't give them the details you're gonna lose them all right so we're gonna just stick our needle through that and we're not gonna pull fast because if you pull fast it might not here at the base and then you might end up with a big loop so you're just gonna pull that there and pull tight and then you're gonna do that again in some other area away from that first half hitch knot Okay, so pull your thread through, but close enough where the loop will create a knot. Put your needle through the loop, okay, and then pull. And it's going to create a half hitch knot, okay? And then just pull real tight. And there's going to be a little lump there, but it's not going to be anything that affects your, um, your dashboard. That's what I'm calling it. All right, so the other thing is, I this idea was stimulated by another YouTuber. I'll link her channel below, Adventures Denali, I think. She is adorable, just adorable. She reminds me of my daughter, and it looks like she lives off roots and berries and plays a ukulele, which my daughter plays because Uncle Mark gave her one. And um, she is also into fountain pens, which I think that's how I found her. I don't know, it was a long time ago. And she did a flip through, and she said, oh, and this is felt and I went what's that and then she didn't stop and show us and so I'm like ah so I thought I'll just so I made this up like but it was stimulated by her channel so I want to link her channel below because she's just as cute as can be and totally not anything she's nothing I'm nothing like her <laughs> but she reminds me of my daughter so much all right so I'm just gonna half hitch it there and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to catch a little fabric here and then kind of come out the middle okay between the two pieces and I'm just gonna pull it out there pull tight and then I'm just gonna snip that off don't snip the stitchy threads just snip the part you want gone okay Ta -da! all right so that that is that let me stand up make sure we're in focus all right, so again, not perfect, but it does the job, okay? I do like the variegated color, and um, that was really, that's really pretty. All right, so let's get it in the TN, because I'm not going to put a patch on this one. And I think I am going to switch to this Odyssey. I wasn't really a fan. I didn't like the ripples, but I really am craving a pen loop. So we are going to put this baby all back together. All right, so there is my um my book and I need to then uh washi tape these I'm going to washi tape these ends down and I'll tell you why because when you put the plastic in here okay like that and then you put the book in the plastic part these ends sometimes come out this way or that way, and it's going to create bumps in um, in the plastic, and I didn't like that. So I'm going to grab some washi tape, and actually, you know what? I'll just grab I'll just grab this stuff here on my sample. So you just need a little piece, and yeah. So I'm just going to tear that off. You just need a little piece. I'm going to pull two because this is sticky. All right. And you just want to just kind of wrap it so it stays in place. 
And that's all that's all I did. And that way they all stay together. Okay. I'm going to go closer to the end on this one, I think. Doesn't hurt the elastic cuz washi tape is removable. So if someday I change my mind, it's easy. Easy peasy. Okay. So that is where I'm going to put this plastic cover, which is going to take most of the stress because this is replaceable. I don't want to start breaking down my actual book, which actually happened. So it made me um, try to figure out a solution. Let me see if I can show you what I mean. See right here? It actually started to like, it actually started to tear. Let me see if I can. Oh, this sticker. Oh my gosh. I got it from Redbubble. Hilarious. I know it's a Rick and Morty or something, but I have this saying that if you see me running, you should run too, because that means somebody's chasing me or something's chasing me. Oh my goodness. And I saw that and I'm like, oh, that is hilarious. All right. So I'm going to do this the Chic Sparrow way. I saw this video a long time ago. I'm going to put my book like this, okay? And I'm going to, and I don't know if I capture it on film or not, but I'm going to put the book in like that. And then it, look at how easy that slid in, dudes. Oh my gosh, I just love that trick. Okay, so that is that. And now I'm going to take my, um, Hang on a second. I'm going to take my new felty thing and put it through here. Just line up the edges and it'll flatten out over time. How cute! All right. Where'd all my stuff go? Oh, yeah, I threw it on the floor. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, and you know what goes through my mind? Who took my... And it's like, dude, you're the only one in the room, honey. All right, so I'm going to put this in here. And I am going to have an extra strand. And I think, I think before I had it like this. Or did I have both of those going? No, I think like that. Just because then it stays, it stays anchored. And then the last strand... I'm going to put my swatch book in. That's what I call it, kind of, my swatch book. And then here's an ink chart, the fountain pen ink. All right, so there you have it. That is my journal setup. That's what I carry with me when I don't want to be without uh, a journal. And there is pockets, so let's get it loaded up. Put my front stuff in there, my scripture. This is running long, so I'm going to make that quick. And then, where's my I love you in a bushel and a pack? Okay. And I love my little paper clip from Caroline. It's so beautiful. Look at, look at how pretty that is. All right. I'm going to just get that in place. I'm going to skip this for now, but I still love this bow clip from Rose Colored Days. That's super cute. And of course, I completely just keep adding stuff to that, the plastic part. And then my die cuts and all of my washi stuff that I like to carry with me because it relaxes me to add washi to pages. And so that's about it. Well, there you go. I'm going to put my pen in there. Where is my pen? Okay. Say, yay, now I have a pen loop. Okay. I'm really liking this Twisby Echo. Um, my son wanted to get me a present, and so that is what I picked. But there you go. So that is a DIY, and it looks like I'm probably going to add this to or make a separate video. So thank you so much for watching. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and always enjoy today. Bye, everybody.